Welcome to the Bezoig Channel Christmas Special. We're going to take a look at the M12 FID2 OX JP. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> I was going to do that in gold for Christmas, but that didn't work the way I thought it was going to. Let's do that again. Milwaukee M12 FID2 OX JP. So the FID2JP comes in the Milwaukee HD box, which was not familiar to me. This is a stackable box. And they, they stack and clip to each other. So it's got these side handle clips that are used to lock the stack together. On this side of the box we can see it labeled M12 FID2 OX JP. This product is sold by Milwaukee Japan. This is everything that was in the case when I bought it. I just bought it tool only, no batteries, no charger. So the case fits an M12 charger. This one came with the belt clip and the bit holder. Put the battery on it just to show that it will fit in the case with a larger battery. And then you can put two of the larger batteries two of the smaller batteries, or you can mix and match. I don't know what this is for because that doesn't make any sense because you can't close the lid. I don't know what this is for. If you're not familiar with the Milwaukee HD box, I don't blame you, neither was I. It seems to be a thing more in Japan and Europe. I don't remember seeing any kits in the United States that come in this Milwaukee HD box. Anybody in Europe, if you could comment, does the Milwaukee HD box clip and lock onto any other system in Europe? Or is this just kind of a Milwaukee thing by itself? There is an adapter plate, I found it on Amazon Germany, that allows you to stack and lock this onto Milwaukee Packout but this box is definitely not as good as Milwaukee Packout. The box has a lot of flex to it when the lid is open. This plastic insert seems to have a lot of wasted space in my opinion. The box doesn't twist when the lid is locked and closed. Decent latches on it, it's got a good handle. It seems sturdy enough. The lid does not lay flat. It holds open at 90 degrees. You know, the insert in here is barely glued in with hot glue. So what else can you fit in this case besides the FID2? The FID2 would be the same thing as the Gen 3 M12. Here's the Milwaukee Surge. Uh, I believe that's Gen 2. And then here's the Gen 2 Impact. That fits in there. If you're interested in this case, it is sold as an empty item that you can customize. I don't know what kind of inserts you're gonna get in it. The inserts are easy enough to remove because they don't do a real good job of hot gluing these into the case anyway. So you can usually pull those out if they aren't already broken loose. Okay, let's take a look at what makes this tool unusual. So the FID2JP came with the Milwaukee bit holder, which is non-magnetic. The holes in the bit holder go all the way through. That's just to show that it's not metal and there's no magnet. The FID2JP also came with the belt clip. It is not typical to get a Milwaukee M12 with the Milwaukee bit holder on it. It's sold as an accessory in the United States. And I added this accessory to my Milwaukee M12 Surge. And then on my second gen M12 Milwaukee Impact, I added the 
halberd bit holder, and I really like this bit holder. This is a very typical double into Japanese bits. The halberd is magnetic, so it holds bits like that just fine. This length of bit in this isn't very practical. I really like the magnet on this halberd. If you've got some screws laying on a surface, it's easy to just pick those up and then go sort them out later. What makes the M12 FID2JP so special? It's the chuck. The chuck is made for these 13 millimeter anvil bits from Japan. Milwaukee put a very nice chuck in this tool. Double-ended slender bit. There's some kind of a spring in the bottom pushing that bit forward. There's still a little bit of axial play there. Vessel, of course, has the solution for that with their plastic spring bits, which work perfectly in this tool. Take out the axial play. There's a little bit of bit wobble, not much. The plastic spring allows the eject feature to work. Here's a single-ended plastic spring bit. You can see that it takes the play out. Here's a vessel terminal bit. Fits very nice in here. Okay, but what about E6 bits? Yes, there's more axial play with E6 bits. So what about the PB Swiss E6 long bits? There's a little bit of axial play there. Not as much as you would think. The bit wobble doesn't seem to be any more than with any of the other bits. This bit with this larger shank for whatever reason, locks onto that. There's almost no axial play on this bit. Very little side to side wobble. For whatever reason, those bits fit really well in this tool. All right, what about the Makita bit piece? Here's without the bit piece. You can see that the anvil goes all the way flush with the end of the chuck. We'll put the bit piece back in. So it does remove about three millimeters of axial play. Makita bit piece is in there. Is it retained by the chuck or do you risk losing it? it does fall out. It kind of retains it, but if you shake it enough, it does fall out. That's not why I imported this tool from Japan. I don't have any intentions of using E6 bits in this. I want this tool for all of my Japanese bits. I've got these other tools that are better suited for the E6 bits. And again, here's the Milwaukee M12 Surge. Japanese bits do not lock into those chucks. That's why I bought this Japanese third generation M12 impact. Because this chuck is so awesome. Got all kinds of M12 batteries and chargers and other M12 tools. And now I've got a Milwaukee Japanese compatible impact. I have my big Makitas that I imported from Japan that fit the Japanese bits, but it's so nice having a smaller, more compact impact for the Japanese bits. The FID2 is 125 millimeters front to back. This TD001 is five millimeters shorter at 120 millimeters. Same as the TD002 at 120 millimeters. The TD002 with a 2.5 amp hour battery, 1,718 grams. The TD001 with a 4 amp hour battery, 2,030 grams. The FID2 with a big battery on it, 
1,153 grams. Well, this one tops out at 650 RPMs, and this impact tops out at 2,450 RPMs, whereas the FID2 tops out at 4,000 RPMs. Batteries and bits in them, the Makita pen driver is 567 grams, and the Makita pen impact is 587 grams. So the FID2 is right in between the full-size impacts and the compact impact and pen driver. If you're interested in this, I'll give you the Amazon Japan links that I used for this tool. I cannot figure out if this tool is sold by itself, tool only, without the HD box. It appears to me the only way to get this tool, tool only, is to get it in this case. And that case makes the shipping on this expensive. Amazon Japan would not ship this to me directly in the United States. I had to use a third-party package forwarding service. I used blackship.com. My referral link for blackship.com will be in the description of this video. If you decide to try to import one of these for yourself, please use that link. Let me give you a tip on a mistake that I made getting this shipped that made it more expensive. So this came from a third-party seller on Amazon Japan. The third-party seller put the tool in the case in a box and shipped it to blackship.com. When it got to blackship.com, blackship.com took a photo of the box and alerted me that there was something in my Blackship inbox ready to be shipped to me. What I wanted to do was just have them put a label on the cardboard box that the third-party shipper used and ship it to me. I wanted to avoid any recombining or repackaging fees from blackship.com. All I wanted them to do was slap a new label on that cardboard box and ship it to me. In the blackship.com shipping process, I made the mistake of checking the box to keep the original packaging. I thought what I was telling Blackship to do was keep the original packaging, put a label on the original packaging, and send it to me. No, I messed up. I misunderstood. What they did was they took the original packaging, put it in another Blackship cardboard box. So I had a cardboard box from Blackship with a cardboard box inside of it and then this inside of that cardboard box, and then the tool inside this case. So I paid extra shipping charges needlessly because I did not understand that by default, without checking any extra boxes, the default is they would have just put a label on the cardboard box and shipped this to me. So don't make that mistake because you don't want this package to be any bigger than it needs to be. So just be forewarned. If you do, use my affiliate links to buy this tool on Amazon Japan, and then you find out that Amazon Japan won't ship it to you in the United States, and then you decide to use my black ship referral link, just be forewarned that it's going to cost a lot to get that shipped to you from black ship. And what I mean is it could cost you more than $100 in shipping just to get it shipped from Black Ship to you because of the size of the package. When I looked around on Amazon Japan, I found an M12 third gen impact that did not come in the case, but it had the old familiar Milwaukee model number, not FID2. So I don't think that that was actually this Japanese version of this tool. Elon, if you're listening, if you could find out for all of us whether or not the Japanese version of this tool with the American model numbers on it is actually a Japanese chuck, that would be very helpful. Also, Elon or anybody in Japan if you can find out if the second gen M12 Surge, the 2551-20, if this tool comes with a Japanese chuck in it from Amazon Japan, that would be very helpful to know.
Because I'm not in Japan, the only thing I can verify is that the M12 FID2 from Milwaukee Tool Japan definitely comes with a Japanese compatible chuck. Everybody have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And as always, thank you very much for watching.